Hi everyone, it's Julie and welcome back to my channel. In this video, I'm going to be doing a recap of our recent trip. We went to Maui and we stayed at Hyatt Regency. I wanted to do like a more in-depth and detailed like review video of our trip because I know that when Jacob and I, before we travel, we always look these kind of videos up on YouTube just to like help us make certain decisions and like, I don't know, if we need things to do. So I broke it down into different categories. It's gonna be, here are all my notes. It's gonna be transportation, hotel, food, and activity. So we only did one activity, which was a spa day. So if you're looking for <clears throat> information about a bunch of different activities to do when you get to Maui, this is definitely not the video for that. All we did was relax. I just wanted to let you know that before you start like watching. Here are the timestamps for the different categories and I will do my best to keep it nice and organized. Transportation. Let me tell you some of the things that we did before we went on the trip. After we booked our hotel and our flight, um, you have to go to safetravelshawaii.gov and that's where you have to upload like all your travel information, like your, um, your plane, like your flight number, your hotel that you're staying at. If you're vaccinated, you have to upload your vaccination card. You need to do that because they are going to give you a QR code and you're gonna need that QR code to get onto the plane and travel. So if you're not vaccinated, I believe you do have to take a test. It has to be at an approved location and also it has to be a specific test and within like 72 hours before your flight. So that part is really confusing. So I will just leave that up to you to do your research on that. If you're vaccinated, easy peasy, all you have to do is bring your vaccination card, the original one. So Jacob actually lost his, so the only thing he had was a printout. So that was acceptable, but I would still call whichever airline you're taking. I called Hawaiian Airlines and they said it was acceptable. Jacob still took a test anyways, just to be sure, cause you know, we were not about to like not go on this vacation. So we live in Vegas. So in order to get to Hawaiian Airlines, that's the airline that we took, we had to go to Terminal 3. We did park our car there for about like five nights and it cost us about like 100 to $120. I don't know the exact, but that's the roundabout. The flight was nonstop and it was about like five to six hours. First of all, I just wanna say, I do not like traveling. I like to go places, but the whole traveling aspect, like going on planes and airports, like I don't like that stuff. So I try to keep it as convenient as possible for me. He booked us seats that had like more room, which was nice. I think it was like definitely needed because um, I'm just used to like 45 minute flights. If you also don't like flying, I recommend paying a little bit extra to get like a roomier seat and also checking your bags. When we checked our bags, we asked the employees like, oh, can you verify us? Which meant, can you check and like approve our vaccination card and all that stuff? And when they did that, they gave us a wristband and you're gonna need that to get onto the flight. I recommend doing that when you're checking in your bags. Get it out of the way because otherwise you're gonna have to go up to the gate and do it there. And when we went up to the gate, like there was a long line. So, I mean, I was just glad that we did it right away and we could just like chill. While you're waiting at your gate, I would download the Hawaiian Airlines app. That way you can watch movies, TV shows while you're flying and you have to download it before you take off. That's what the flight attendant said. On the plane, they did feed us. They gave us like a burrito type of thing. They gave us snacks and cookies. I believe the drinks were free as well. Not alcoholic drinks, but you know, like regular drinks like soda and like water and stuff like that. When we arrived, there were th like three different options to get to the hotel. The hotel was about like a 40 to 45 minute um, ride. You can either take a shuttle, which was $30 per person. You can Uber, and I guess the price varies depending on how many people are needing Ubers at that time. When we went, it was about $80 to $120. He also ordered a ride that was comfort, so he got like a bigger car because we had luggage and we just like wanted to be comfortable. It's like a 45 minute ride. Or you can take a private car so you can call the hotel and they can set it up for you. It's through like a third party, but that was $300 each way. When you do do the shuttle, I think you have to book it in advance. I'm not 100% sure. 
So before we get into the hotel, now I'm gonna jump to our departure because I wanna keep all the transportation in one segment. When we left the hotel to go to the airport, we did the same thing. We either Ubered or Lyft, I don't know which one it was, but it was you know around 80 to $120. And again, 40 to 45 minute ride. So when you get to the airport, there is a three-step process. When you get there, first get your bags checked through the agricultural inspection. Make sure your bags are cleared. After that, go ahead to the kiosk thing and check in and print out like your bag tags. And after that, that's when you drop off your bags, like your checked bags. I didn't know that, so when we got to like the drop off for our bags, um, they were like, oh, you have to go back and get it checked cleared the agriculture thing. So we had to go all the way back, stand in line. After being in like kind of a long flight, Jacob decided to change our seats to first class. So I've, this was like my second time ever taking first class. And the reason why I'm gonna talk about this section is because the very first time I took first class, I didn't know like the food was free. I didn't know like any of that stuff. So like I just like denied everything. And you know, you should be able to enjoy it. So when we took the first class, it was a lot more roomier. Um, your bags were free and you're one of the first groups to like board. First, honestly, because I don't really like to fly, I think um, this was a really good idea. They just have a lot more room for like storage too. They give you a blanket, a pillow. Um, they also give you a tablet to watch like the movies and shows on. Uh, if you don't have one they also have a i think three course meal or four course meal i mean that was free so you know if you do get first class don't think you gotta like pass that up because it was actually pretty good and i actually don't eat on planes usually like my ritual is like pretzels and sprite but the food sounded so good so i was like okay i'm just gonna have like a little bit of a bite it ended up being really good and it is like on another level, this first class, okay? They give you like linen, real plates and real glasses. It's, it's not plastic, like they give you silverware. It's, it's like totally different. They had like little salt and pepper shakers and yeah, just like, I mean, I guess, right? You know, you're paying that much extra, so you should be able to like get a few perks. I did like the fact that we had our own bathroom. So because there aren't too many people in first class, like the bathrooms were pretty much like always available, which I really liked. The bathrooms aren't different. It's not any roomier. It's the same as the regular bathrooms. I just liked it because it was more convenient because less people were like using it. I'm sure every plane is different, but if you take Hawaiian Airlines, the tray is gonna be like on the armrest, like on the side. So I could not figure it out. I was like, where is my tray? Part of the arm, it flipped up and then there was like a tray, tray in there. There was like a little button and I pressed it and the tray kind of popped up and you, I had to like pull it out and unfold it. Also, I thought you could take the pillows and blankets, but I guess not. Okay, so I think that's all for transportation. So yeah, if you end up taking first class, don't ever pass up on the free stuff. It was very relaxing and more enjoy, one of the most enjoyable flights. Like, I just loved it. Hopefully I can take first class all the time because that was fun. Okay, you guys. So the next category is gonna be hotel. The hotel we stayed at was Hyatt Regency in Maui. So I guess this is like an older hotel, but they remodeled everything. Um, I thought it looked really good. They did have dabbles of like, you know, like the old walking through the hotel. You can tell by like the woodwork and some of the furniture and like even like the doors in the rooms. Like I'm like, okay, this does look like an older hotel. But honestly, overall, they did a really good job. I definitely like more modern stuff. I didn't feel like it was super old at all. When we got to the hotel, we were able to check in right away. They did need to see our vaccination card again. They did say that some of the restaurants might ask for it too. So anywhere we went out to eat, I just like brought a picture of it. Um, I took a picture of the front and the back of it. Yeah, because I honestly didn't want to lose it, you know? So I didn't want to like bring it around everywhere. The hotel was super cute. We went in December and it was all decorated like kind of like Christmassy. The hotel key that they give you is like this bracelet and it's like, I guess, waterproof. You can go in the ocean with it. You can go in the pool and um, it doesn't affect the key. I thought that was pretty smart because I hate sometimes like 
you know scrummaging around to get like grab your hotel key like this one you can just put on your wrist and just put it to the door and it opens your hotel key you can use it to get in and out of your room but you can also use it to get towels so when you go to the beach when you go to the pool they do have like seven different towel caddy things i don't know how they track it but they can track like how many towels you take and then like, and if you've returned them, you can grab the towels from any like caddy and also return them in any one. One time I tried to open the door for another guest, like I used my key to get some towels and I had the door open and she was like, oh no, like let's go ahead and close it because like we don't want our towels on your tab. And I was like, oh, like I didn't even know that. So you're going through the hotel, it's outdoor and indoor. Oh my gosh, it's very beautiful. I would definitely say it's kid friendly. There were a lot of animals as well. It was like a little mini zoo. They have some birds in cages and some birds that are just like on this like round thing. They had penguins, they had swans, ducks, flamingos. So the penguins have like their own little area and I don't really think they walk off from the area. It's just like a little pond. The swans and the flamingos um, and like the ducks they have like this little area kind of like towards the back of the hotel but people can just walk through and they don't bother you as long as you don't bother them they don't bother you they do have two pools i think one the bigger pool for like adults and stuff it's not completely for adults like no children allowed but there was a separate pool geared for like children they had I can't remember because I literally just went in and out. So I think it was like some kind of like trampoline or something like that in that pool area. Maybe it was just like a net and it had like a bridge. I only saw one slide, but Jacob said there's like two slides there. In the more like adult area, I mean, kids are still allowed, but in that adult area, it was very big and I believe it goes up to like nine feet. They also have a place where you can rent out <clears throat> like pool toys. I don't know if you rent them or you buy them. I think you can do both. There's like noodles, like pool noodles, or you can actually get floaty, you know, like those floaty bed things. I don't know why I'm, I'm going like brain dead but they also have a waterfall and underneath the waterfall it's like a swim up bar like a little grotto area so that was kind of cool and that's also where like the bathrooms are as well so when we went to the pool area we actually reserved um day beds it was literally the last day bed and we reserved this in advance so i would highly recommend when you book your vacation like you book your room also book all your dinner reservations your spa appointments and like any activity that you want to do because literally it was like so booked the day beds they have ones that face like the pool and that's like just around the pool area and they also have ones that face the ocean so we were out of luck so we got the ones like by the pool but honestly it wasn't bad at all because it kind of like blocked us from the sun and Jacob and I both do not do well with sun. The day beds that we got were $200 each and it had a um, like half of a shade. You can pull it like halfway. So they also have like regular chairs. Those are first come first serve and it's free. The $200 that doesn't include like any food or drinks. It's just straight out $200 and any like food or drinks that you order is gonna be extra. When you get a day bed, you do get a server <clears throat> they will have your name like when you reserve it they have your name on the day bed so you know like which one is yours the restaurant by the pool the food was really good i really liked it since we're talking about the pool area i want to talk about the beach so i think because of like you know climate change and all that stuff the beach is basically gone there's like barely any beach left in front of this hotel if you want to bring your own chair i think you could there is enough room like we just took towels and we laid out by the beach because i wanted to like have my feet in the sand and all that stuff also there was a storm before we went there so there was a lot of debris in the ocean there was like a lot of like i don't know bark from the palm trees and like branches and leaves and just like a bunch of debris in the ocean so like it wasn't really that satisfying to like walk into the ocean and stuff because there was just so much crap that we had to like step on and sometimes it hurt and yeah that part kind of stunk but whatever if you walk further to the right like towards the other hotels the beach gets bigger so i just wanted to let you know 
Now, working our way back into the hotel, when you go into the hotel, they do have a little, I know this is part of food, but they have like a little cafe. And it's basically kind of like a to-go place where you wake up in the morning, you go there, grab a coffee, pastries, acai bowl, like a breakfast sandwich, like stuff like that. Usually there's like a long line in the morning, so just be prepared for that. They also have a few different stores for like clothes. So, you know, if you need like a Hawaiian shirt or you need like a dress or like sandals, like flip flops. They also have another general store for, you know, like water, snacks, medicine, sunscreen, aloe vera, stuff like that. So before we get into the room, I do want to mention a few things that I really liked about the hotel. They're like pretty eco-friendly. They have like the trash cans like separated into recycle and trash and something else. I think like waste or something like that. Even like their utensils are eco-friendly. They do have room service available. However, it doesn't come in like one of those trays and stuff. It's basically like a to-go style. So the room that we stayed in was the Ocean View Suite and it's room 880. I will say something about this room. They have like a luau show or whatever, like every single night from, I, I wanna say it's like either an hour to two hours long, somewhere around there. And it ends at maybe like eight or nine. So if you're in this room, just be prepared for that if you're in your room that's gonna be loud for like an hour or two okay you guys this is what it sounds like with the doors closed now i'm gonna open the door so we heard it every single night it was a pretty decent sized room it's a corner room and it had like a living area and that sofa, it had like a pull out couch. And they also had another round table like on the side with chairs. They also had like a little coffee bar area and they also had a fridge in that same corner. There's two TVs in there. One was in the living space area and the other TV was in the bedroom. And there's two balconies. So there's one balcony that's in the living room area. That balcony had chairs and a table and you can sit and like look outside. It had like a part ocean view, but majority of the view was like the mountains and like the roads. The second balcony was in the, the master room and that view is more private. I think the difference between like this room and then like another ocean room is that the other rooms, the view that you're looking at, the main pool, and then you can see the ocean behind that. Honestly, I don't think that would be too bad of a view. The only thing that would concern me is if you don't like when it's loud because when there's people out there, it's open 24 seven. So if you want it to be like silent and just want to hear the ocean, then yeah, I would say get this room um, because this room, it was just the ocean. You can see people like walking by and stuff, but majority was just the ocean and a little bit of the beach, their little luau area. It was beautiful. The sunsets and sunrise was just like gorgeous. Their bathroom um, had a toilet and a tub in the same room. Also, they don't have a fan. Their shower was pretty roomy. Um, I liked it. It had a rain shower and then it also had like a detachable shower head. So I really liked that. We had one sink and then the vanity mirror was lit up and they had, you know, regular accessories like blow dryers, another extra mirror, the magnified mirror. So when you're doing your makeup, you can see the bed was very, very comfy, super comfortable. The closet space, there wasn't really that much closet space, but <coughs> I'm also someone that doesn't really ever use a closet. Um, I don't use the drawers at all. Like I'll hang up some stuff like that I don't want to be wrinkled, but majority of the time I'm a type of person that keeps everything like in my suitcase. The closet was pretty small. It had mirrors on both sides of the door. They had a safe and like robes and slippers and drawers. So overall hotel, it was beautiful, it was clean, eco-friendly, and definitely kid-friendly. All right, you guys, so now we are on to food. So I would like to say book everything in advance. When we booked our stuff, everything was like pretty much booked out. It's better to be safe than sorry, you know? I want to mention again that little to-go cafe that I was talking about inside the hotel where you can get like coffee and pastries and all that stuff. They have one venue that serves like two different restaurants during the day is called swan court 
This is where we got breakfast, and then at, during the dinner time, it turns into Sun's Steakhouse. I think you can order regular stuff too, but like majority of the people there were doing the breakfast buffet. It's $32 for adults and then $5 to $12 for children, like depending on their age. I don't know how they figure that out. It's open from 6.30 a.m. to 11 a.m. And that those prices don't include taxes or gratuity, okay? And it's first come, first serve. We only went there Friday and Saturday. And I don't know if they change every day or if they change on the weekends. But Friday when we went, the breakfast was so good. Oh my gosh. They had like muffins and waffles and pancakes and hash browns, potatoes, salmon. It was just like a lot of variety. But I also loved the fact that they made it so like, they like Hawaiian. It wasn't just like hash browns, but it was like potatoes with cheese and like green onions. They had like Portuguese sausage. Um, I think they also had regular sausage too, but... Um, for their omelets, they had like a meat lover omelet, a veggie omelet, or just like an egg and cheese omelet. So there's like a lot of options. Also regular stuff too, like cereal and oatmeal. Then on Saturday, really looking forward to those blueberry muffins, but they didn't have any. It was just like chocolate muffins. No, it was okay. I feel like the Saturday one was more basic. I don't know if they do that on purpose because maybe like they're trying to target like a wider variety of people so like maybe they try to keep it basic as possible and the thing i love about this hotel was that they were very careful with like the whole covid stuff when you go into the buffet they provide you gloves so you have to put on gloves um, and also you have to put on a mask like while you're going through the line so i really liked that because you know keeping it safe the venue there it was so nice like i honestly feel like there's literally no bad seat in there maybe if you're like tucked away in the corner in the back but you look out and it's basically like outside but they have this like net that like you can barely see i didn't even know there was a net there you can see like the little pond that they made and there's like a waterfall and sometimes like the ducks and the swans come by and you see like palm trees and the beautiful like sun and view it was just a beautiful place to have breakfast especially with like the hawaii air so on the other days for breakfast we just order room service because i had to do like this work call thing if you're gonna try something from room service i would say try their coconut bread french toast it was so freaking good and their breakfast potatoes i want to talk about sun's steakhouse it's the same venue it just turns into something different during dinner time honestly i think the steak was cooked very nice and but they even say on there like that it's only seasoned with like i don't know like salt and pepper i think and that's it i think they could have done better with the sauces it was good but i wasn't like wowed their mashed potatoes were super good their fish was good we had shrimp scampi and that was good i think we also had um b and b ahi i think that's what it's called that was good too it wasn't bad but like i think their restaurant was like it was like an award-winning restaurant or something like that for their steakhouse maybe we just didn't order the right sauces i don't know but I just felt like it was good it was okay i just wasn't like oh my god i would definitely eat here again you know they didn't really have a very big dessert menu so the only thing that we ordered was like their cheesecake i think one was like mango and the other one was like pineapple or something like that but honestly like um it was decent if you do go to any of the restaurants there i recommend japango so Japango is an Asian cuisine. They have sushi, sashimi, rolls. Oh my gosh. It was beautiful. It was outside. We were able to sit where you can see the ocean and the sunset. It was gorgeous. I just love the fact that we were able to be outside. The food was amazing. Got a bunch of different like rolls and sashimis and their ginger creme brulee was delicious. And also we didn't order this at the restaurant, but we ordered it back to our room called the I'm gonna butcher this, the Ka Anapali pie or something. It's a brownie crust, banana, macadamia nut ice cream with whipped cream, caramel, and chocolate sauces. It was so delicious. Very, very good. I would recommend either get that or the ginger creme brulee. The ginger creme brulee, it's like a, a little bit different than a regular creme brulee. So if you're if you're wanting something like totally different, I would say get the pie. It was so good. We also ordered malasadas. I would just pass on that. It wasn't very good. The dough felt so dense and it I felt like it was like overdone. 
and the sauces the chocolate sauces and stuff was like whatever it was like okay i mean just the fish tasted so fresh and just like buttery and good quality like it was very delicious definitely recommend japango there were two restaurants that we went off property one was fleetwoods and that was on front street it was about i believe like a 10 minute ride jacob wanted like the rooftop one because i guess you can see like the ocean it's really beautiful but we actually sat inside because they didn't have anything available you had to like go upstairs and it it has like a very like Englishy like vibe. I think it's labeled as like a seafood restaurant. We had like pokey, crab cake, fish dishes. I would say the food was good. It has a lot of good reviews like on Google. That area is very cute, very artsy. There's like a bunch of little shops everywhere so you can like walk and walk up and down. And then you can also see the ocean. We also went to another restaurant called Lahaina Fish Company. I didn't really like that restaurant. I didn't like the food. The reason why we went there was because Jacob's family actually owned a restaurant in like that actual uh, store. But yeah, he just wanted to go see like what it turned out to be. I didn't really like the food. I felt like the service was good, but like our fish, like our tuna and stuff, like I don't know, it didn't taste like fresh. I guess like I was just expecting like super fresh since we're like by the ocean. It was just cool to see like what type of restaurant that they owned before. I mean, it wasn't called the Lahaina Fish Company or I mean, they didn't have the same food or anything. Overall, out of all of the restaurants, I would say definitely at least make a reservation at Japango. So good. Now we are at our last one, activities. <laughs> I will say they have like some stargazing activity thing. I'm sure they have like snorkeling. Honestly, we were not interested in doing anything on this trip. All I wanted to do was eat good food and relax. So I guess the only thing that I could really talk about is the spa. We both did a 80 minute massage. The massage area um, is kind of like further down, like almost, I wanna say like at the end of the hotel. It's small, definitely not like fancy pantsy. It almost feels like they put all the remodeling into everything else and kind of like forgot about the spa. The only co-ed area is the waiting room. The women's section, they had a hot tub, but that was also very small. I think only like two people were allowed at once. Only two people were allowed in the sauna and the same with the steam room. It was just very small. And when I was in the hot tub, I would look up and you can see like cracks in the ceilings and like just like on the walls and stuff. I feel like the hot tub felt a little bit like grimy so I left because I was like Ugh, I feel like I'm like kind of sitting in filth the sauna was fine I didn't get to go in the steam room because I didn't know how it worked I was just like over it at that time um also the rooms I felt like weren't very like I guess it, just like not what I'm used to I feel like when you go into a spa like the rooms are pretty like dark and kind of like sets the mood for relaxation it was dark but they had like blinds and like it just didn't feel like luxurious so if you're looking for like a super like bougie spa this is definitely not it but i will say uh it was the best massage i have ever gotten For some reason she was just doing a bunch of different stuff like with my arms and my legs and it was literally the best massage I've ever had. Although like the whole spa area wasn't like my favorite massage, so great. After the massage, they bring you to this like, I guess relaxation room, like a winding down type of room. And that room is small too, but it is beautiful and relaxing because it's like this huge window and all you see is palm trees, sunset, and the ocean. That's like all you see and all you hear is the ocean and it's very calming and therapeutic, but there's like not a lot of chairs. I wanted to sit there and kind of like relax, but then I was like, well, we can just walk outside <laughs> and it's literally the same view. But that area had like snacks and water and tea. Yeah, and then you went right back into your locker room. Uh, in the spa, they had a locker room. They provided you sandals and a robe. You can wear your own sandals if you'd like, which I don't know if that was like very sanitary, but that's what they did. So that was the recap of our trip. I hope this information was somewhat helpful. If you guys have any more questions, please feel free to comment down below and I will try to answer them as best as I can. Again, I have that just regular vlog if you wanna watch it. I'll leave it in the description box or up in the cards. And yeah, I hope you guys have a wonderful day. Thank you so much for hanging out with me and I'll see you guys later.
Bye!